On April the 3rd through the 6th of this year at the University of Arkansas, there was a competition. It was called the Razorback Regional First Robotics Competition. And what it was is teams from across the state of Arkansas, from the different various high schools, all competing with one another with a robot that they constructed. A computerized robot, the mechanics of the thing. Each school put together a team uh, that wanted to compete. And they all showed up at the University of Arkansas and the rules of the game were your robot had to move, it had to climb, and it had to throw a frisbee. And these teams, you know, they had mentors to help them out. But some of the machines these young high school kids came up with are just phenomenal. Anyway, uh, the competition was intense. And unfortunately, not all the grant money was claimed because not all schools fielded a team. But th this is just astonishing stuff. Which you, it, you just go here to where it says, for, you don't even really have to type in Razorback Regional. Just type in first robotics competition and click on that link right there by that guy's face and you'll see what some of these kids came up with. It's just astonishing. These kids are the cream of the crop, the geniuses in our society, the, the, the smart kids in our school, the ones that should be recognized, you know, not the ones that get in trouble all the time, but the ones that, that really apply themselves and try to try to not only to help themselves, but eventually will hopefully help our society as a whole. Anyway, uh, it was a fun time for all of them. They learned a lot. And I want you to meet one of these geniuses that went to that competition and competed as a team member. And here he is, Ethan. You were part of the first robotics uh, yes, I was. up in Fayetteville. Was it fun? Yes, very fun. Yeah, yeah, grand time, huh? Let me close this curtain over here. It's messing up the light on my camera. I don't, I, we got to get your handsome mug in here. We don't want to wash you out. Okay, now, now, what part of the uh, robotics were you in, the mechanical side or the programming side? I was in the mechanical side. You were in the mechanical side, but you're learning programming right now. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to build this robot? Uh, we only got six weeks to build it. Six weeks, and you had to start from scratch, right? We were given the materials, but yes, we had to Yeah, you had to put scratch. it all together and figure out how it works and everything, right? You had to come up with your own design, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that must have been a... A butt kicker. <laughs> how, how many were there any arguments among you guys about what what should be done, or did you all you kind of geeky types just kind of get together and say, well, let's let's just make it happen? I wouldn't say they said arguments. We kind of debated about what would be the best design. Yeah. But once we came up with the drivetrain that we had, which was a six wheel base with two motors, uh huh, and driven like a tra tank, yeah, a tank design, yeah. We all agreed on that one because it, it would work the best. That that was a great experience all the way around, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, worthwhile time, wasn't it? Yeah, that's fantastic. Who was your, uh, you had a mentor, I think, that kind of guided you along, didn't you? What was his name? Joshua Lee Long. He's the uh, chemistry, physics, and now he's teaching a new class at our school called Intro to Engineering and Design. Wow, fantastic. I mean, you'd like to do that again, though, wouldn't you? I'm going to. Yeah, well, you're going to be there as an advisor much more than a participator, is that right? Only after I graduate. I'm going to be able to be part of the team next year and the next year after that. Oh, do tell. So you're going to get to go back to with another robot? and mm -hmm. Well, fantastic. Good for you. <laughs> yep. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, that, what, did you uh, come in? What place did you come in? Did you, did you make any play? How many teams were there, first of all? Uh, there was about 100, I think there was. 100 teams? We're close to that. Really? Up in Fayetteville, where, where you did this? Let's see. Just a bunch is what there you're was trying a to bunch. say. Okay, There's now like and did did you that. come in? Uh, what place did you guys come in on your robot at all? Or yeah, as far as the first year teams go, uh, we came in third. In oh, the that's first cool. Years. That is so cool. And overall, <laughs> we came in like twenty, no, thirty something, thirty something place. Third for the first year and thirty something overall. Even though there was probably a hundred teams or more, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That is a fantastic. You have some smart guys there out there. There was fifty three teams. I know that. Fifty three teams. Last wow. Place was wow. And you have a lot of, you have a lot of smart people out there in Bologna High School, don't you? You have some really sharp guys, you know. Well, fantastic. I just wanted everybody to know that my grandson, my uh, you're my uh, at least one thing there. 
Next year, I'm bringing my own band-aids because I got to cut my finger, <laughs> and I had to go through eight hey. pages of paperwork. <laughs> Where before you go on ahead and just put your own band-aid on, you kept yeah. your mouth shut, everything would have been okay. <laughs> I didn't have enough band-aids. Well, next time you will. Yes, All right, will. Ethan is back. Now that we've covered his first robotics escapade, uh, Ethan is back. He's going, uh, this will be video number four, of course, and he's going to try to install his new... Uh, volume control and on off switch he, which he has already put together and he's going to install it in the radio we're going to see if we can't get this baby swinging and poking and again right and putting out some noise right yep all right well i'll just let him work on it i've got some other things to do on, on my own radio okay buddy all right it's good to see you back and congratulations on the results of your robotic building i, I thought that was really cool i gotta tell you that was really cool all right Oh, Ethan is plugging away here, trying to find out his problem. He installed the new volume potentiometer and on-off switch. We got it from uh, Radio Days, and still, the 250 ohm resistor is overheating, and he can't figure out why. Move your arm a second there, son. Okay, now that, let me see if I can zero in on it here a little bit to kind of help you all understand what's going on. There's a resistor right here, 250 ohms. It comes off the center tap of the secondary, the power supply uh, transformer. It comes out, it goes up, and it connects to a 70 ohm here. Then it goes over and through a 4 meg up to the control grid of the detector, the second detector, 75 tube. And that resistor right there is frying. And of course it also goes over here to the, con the uh, volume control, which we've already replaced, and that capacitor. It's not there. So he's uh, he's plugging away. What's not there? The 4 mag ohms resistor. The 4 mag ohm resistor is not there? No. Well, that could be why we're getting a lot of current draw through this baby. We need to have something that will limit it right here. Well, what are you going to do about that, boy? <laughs> I'm going to put one in there. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, take a look at it to verify what you're doing is right. You show me your logic and, and all that sort of thing. We're not going to let this kick your butt, are we? No. No, that's right. <laughs> well, as you can see from my workbench, all the junk and everything all around, Ethan is learning how to be a real bench tech. Junk everywhere. That's very important. You must learn that skill first. Clutter everything up. <laughs> Ethan is checking some tubes in his radio. He's checked, checked everything else in the chassis, and it all seems to be good. And we do have a tube that has a shorted heater to cathode. Anyway, you've learned how to use a... Look at look here, Ethan. You, you learned how to use a uh, signal tracer today, mm -hmm. a signal generator today, and now, of course, you're doing your tube test. This has been a pretty pretty good day for test equipment, yeah, it ain't is. it? <laughs> learned a lot today. Now, Ethan just tested his 6A7 tube, and he had a heater to cathode short as you can see right there it's shorted what's the needle all right now what was the cause of that Ethan the wrong setting the wrong setting okay you had it you had this in position two right 2200 instead of 3200 all right now what happens when you go to the right position it the short goes right. away right lesson learned right yep. double check your settings Not just before double, triple, check. triple check them before you test the tube. Very good, excellent. So that tube tests out good, doesn't it? Yep. All the way, good. Well, Ethan had to finally go home tomorrow. He has a youth camp meeting that he needs to go to, but he was unsuccessful in getting his radio operational. Something has gone wrong with it. It worked fine one day, and the next day it did not. So. I think the problem may be in the oscillator circuit. I don't know. I'm, I'm helping him at a minimum level. I want him to just tackle this on his own. I'm answering his questions, things like that. Anyway, he did learn how to use a signal tracer this weekend, how to use a signal generator this weekend. He already knew how to use a vacuum tube voltmeter. And he also honed his skills a little bit on the tube tester. So he's coming along nicely. Uh, I've, I've already talked to him. We're gonna, I'm going to hire him to do some jobs this summer around the house. I need a little help. And give him a chance to make a little money. So he will be back. You'll be getting more FaceTime with old Ethan. Uh, he may not be on the radios. He may be doing other things. 
So until then, this is John.